unable to process the specific customer service request. Please repeat the order. Yeah, you are. We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Still tinkering with that? It's not gonna fix itself. Don't we have repair drones for that kind of thing? This was a repair drone. Why can't something exciting happen around here for once? Nothing wrong with stability. It means everything's running like clockwork. Don't you ever want a little fun? Hey, you. Yeah, you. Want to be famous? Kid, you got presents. Natural magnetism, know what I mean? Tell you what, you're gonna like it a whole lot more once we start talking bits. Listen, uh, you got an agent? 
Some kind of representation? Fresh natural talent. I know it when I see it. Listen, you got a real special quality, raw energy. I see you in pictures, kid. I'm making a feature, Space Pirates of Moros Prime. It's gonna be a hit, but we still need a star. And I think you got the chops. Not so fast. First, we gotta talk about royalties. Let's just see where this audition goes, huh? So what do you say? You ready for the chance of a lifetime? Terrific! We're holding auditions at the studio. Head to Odeon Pictures and take the elevator. You're going all the way to the top, baby. Anti Creo Spatial Mask and Cream leaves you feeling fresh and tingling. Do not operate heavy machinery for two hours after application. Is that supposed to be a model of a system? Not super accurate. I once treated a lady who got her hand caught in the gears. Idiot was more worried about her rings than her fingers. CNP Borst Worst. It's not the worst unless it's Borst Worst. Spacer's Choice Free Slice Bread. It tastes fresh be- Because it was. I've always loved that sculpture. It's an artery, and you say that every time. It's strange, though. I thought Byzantium was the center of Halcyon. That's a figure of speech. I know that. You, with the hips, over here. Let me take a closer look at you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Ah, oh, Celeste, you've done it again. I knew from the moment I laid eyes on you that I'd found my muse. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. Darling, you and that brutish swagger of yours have been on my mind the moment you stepped into my studio. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? Marvelous! You and I are gonna wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face! What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. Oh, you cad! 
You'll be the talk of Byzantium once I'm done with you. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear. Helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacer's choice pedals. You have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. I expect you'll cut an exquisite figure. What else do you need to know? If I were an enterprising spacer in need of a wardrobe, I'd probably head to the Groundbreaker. Fabulous! I can't wait to see what you dredge up. For you, anything. Outside Byzantium? Of course not. There's nothing for me outside Byzantium. Yes, and I'm terribly grateful you've agreed. Look, darling, I don't belong outside Byzantium any more than a fish belongs on the land. Anyway, I'm quite certain Byzantium wouldn't last three days without me. I'd return to a smoking ruin of hideous fabrics and mismatched colors. You're very welcome. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright... There. Love. That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. Darling, do I look like an amateur? I read her measurements by eye. And don't you ask, because they're no one's business but her own. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. Y you know, there's, there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. 
Not yet. Not for real. The next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. I love Byzantium. Where else are you going to find art, culture, working toilets? I'm sure. Your other colonies have cities like this. But those are so far away. I'm talking about. Have you tried our new cocktail sponsored by Rizzo's? One part purple spectrum vodka, one part artificial tomato-like substitute juice. We call it a Blue Bloody Mary. Oh, by all means, ask away. Maverick Johnston's about to release his new picture. From what I hear, they've already started shooting. I don't believe in work. Work is for auto mechanicals and lower classes. I don't mean to sound cruel. There's nothing wrong with working. It's just so unnecessary. Why bother? We all have our roles in society. I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. This drinking establishment is my investment. Hey, stand back. You... I'm part of Minister Clark's personal detail, and that means you gotta keep five feet back at all times. Of course not. <laughs> but I'm not on the job right now. The others took me out to celebrate on account of me just getting hired and all. He's basically the most important person in the colony, which makes me the most important guard in the colony. <laughs> yeah. That means I got a key to the minister's estate, my own personal UDL assist issued shotgun. <laughs> they don't give those out to just anyone. That's right. Not just anyone is allowed to have a key to Minister Clark's residence. It's all so very high level. A monumentous occasion in the course of Halcyon history. After a deep and thorough examination of our budgets, revenue streams, and predictive models, we are sure they look fancy, but inside they're just marble and existential emptiness. Promotions the plan is to sit idly by. Thanks to your continued hard work, Halcyon is healthier and more connected than ever. In the coming months, Byzantium will be sure to see the there's my parents' place. Smell that? Industrial grade cleaning solvent and desperation. Now, my friends, keep up the hard work. Is that you? Oh, 
We certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. Play the ruffian angle some more. You're supposed to help me make an impression. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Yep, we're a pair of disgraceful lowlifes. Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. He's right. Since when can you afford authentic Terran marble? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather, uh, substantial. You what? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. Why did you do that? We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd you'd run off to become a a miscreant, could we? The neighbors would talk, and not in a good way. We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of 12-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you gonna do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to, uh, leave. Quietly, if you don't mind. Well, we're trying to avoid further embarrassment. I'm afraid it would cause quite a stir if the neighbors saw you two stomping about. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn, please. Don't cause a scene. Damn right, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Let's talk outside.
Can we talk? Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. I wanted them to get upset. I just thought it would play out differently. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid Aetherwave dramas and then we'd walk in mother would drop her mock apple cider and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed I know I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that it's embarrassing you know and I've got a reputation to maintain I'm used to rough situations. Like when someone loads your pistol with blanks and strands you in a Marauder Moon base, or traps you in an airlock with an angry mantis worm. But I want to talk about me now. Unless you mean the kind who'll look out for you to blink so they could swipe your bits. The galaxy's not exactly crawling with those. Anyway, I don't want to sift through this lousy experience for meaningful life lessons. I'm mad, and I want to do something about it. Something like... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? I could open a new account designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary, all the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing, and I'll get to cut them off. As long as I don't develop a taste for Wolgonzola and bad legal dramas, that's fine by me. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Something on your mind? What did I tell you? His down with the man shtick was just an act. No one who yammers that much means half of it. Take a page out of my rule book. Don't trust anyone. Then it's easy. Don't get all mushy on me now. Come on, what did we just learn? People look out for their own interests. It's a fundamental law of nature, same as gravity and conservation of motion. Sure I can. In fact, I bet you I live a lot longer. I'm warning you, that reverse psychology stuff doesn't work on me. Are worse things than a little solitude. Anyway, you really want to tell me you're helping the scientist because you think he'll save the colony? <sighs> and here I thought I'd seen it all. This galaxy must be bigger than I'd thought. Enough about Harlow, though. Anything else? Must be.
be joking. Oh, there. That's one right there. Can't you just see the stench of impropriety radiating off of him? For the last time, access to Byzantium is impossible without a proper nav key. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to be somewhere else. You sure have seen a lot of the colony, huh, Dr. Fenhill? Ellie. And sure, but most of it looks the same from inside a ship. Sorry, Dr. Ellie. Still, though, don't you find it thrilling? Being in space? Look, it's just Ellie. I guess we're going to Fallbrook. I swear, next time we put in the groundbreaker, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask her over. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm having trouble focusing on my work. Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad'd say. Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. arrived at the groundbreaker. All right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go.
Good to see you, boss. I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. Something vexing you, Captain? I wouldn't say my parents disowned me, strictly speaking. But before they died, they accused me of thoughtlessly abandoning them. I couldn't understand it. I was only trying to make them proud by becoming a better vessel for the plan, to feel the joy they felt. I was so certain my potential was wasted as a laborer, and was willing to risk everything just to prove to them that they were wrong. I was lost, misguided. Something on your mind? Hey, Cap. Sure. Hey, Cap. So I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now, I ain't need your help, I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he had used for the counter. He's probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I'd get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but he'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. Hold on. What happens if we hit the wall? Most likely the bullet will ricochet, which could be bad. Or hilarious. There's a tiny chance of a hull puncture, which would suck us into space one chunk at a time. Bad and hilarious. Ugh. Just imagine that. That's why we don't miss. Okay, Captain, she's gone. near about vibrating I'm so excited so she got here and after a few minutes she said hey do you have some new parts and I was like nah I used a new soap and then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle like and called the cut of my outfit elegant I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard then I led her into the kitchen I think she about cried when she saw the spread She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. 
Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. One of us has got to be. We're both... June's so reserved, and I'm so shy. I, I worried if I never said anything, nothing would ever get said, you know? I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor, and how it made her want to be more open. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it would work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals, talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met Junlei at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour.
are now in orbit above Fallbrook, Captain. This looks like a place. You ready to get my money or what? I see you're still in one piece. However, you never know when that could change. Consider our accidentally torn into tiny fragments coverage. Note that all of your fragments must be recovered and must be smaller than a standard bit cartridge for the payouts to kick in. Remember that one? That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. Are you serious? Well, we interviewed the parents extensively. They had plenty of awkward childhood stories that illustrated their daughter's clumsiness and capriciousness. Hey, those are entirely made up. Furthermore, the claim spurred a whole line of fashion-related policies. It's become a very lucrative market. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd theoretically add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. Please, my policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Very well, I'll do it, but then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. A word, Captain? You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. I've never been prouder to stand back and watch someone else work. I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Yeah. The funny thing about getting what you want is then you gotta figure out what to do with it. I've never been much of a planner. Makes my eyeballs itch. If only you could have been my chief surgeon back in the day. Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Don't make it weird. Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? Are you sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you.
you don't have to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day they watch yours. So you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. It's nothing personal. It's just the closest thing I've got to a code. Anyway, enough of the touchy feelies, huh? Thank mm -hmm. you. 